view the results of the simulation we started in the last tutorial. I'm also going to be showing you um, some of the output files that Radiance generates and how to understand them. And we can go to the uh, results folder and see what it uh, did. Here's a, a neat trick. If you go to, uh, you type in open folder, and you'll see this open file directory. And if I collect my, uh, connect my study folder into this file path, it will automatically pop up where it uh, created those images, which is right in that ladybug folder inside this tutorial test one and then it created this image-based simulation image-based simulation backup that's because we backed up the, the images we chose to so the image-based simulation folder it comes out with a few interesting um, files i'd like to explain here the first is the uh, first one i'll show you is this error log and this it will tell you if there's any um, problems with the rendering and it will give you the settings that it ran for. So for instance, in this, we um, remember that we, we chose the radiance settings for AB2, which were the low settings. Uh, and so that's all recorded here, uh, which is nice to be able to come back and see what the um, quality of settings were. It also tells you how long it took and how many rays it sent out. And we'll talk more about those rays in class. Um, this also contains several of the root definitions it used. So for instance, for the sky, it used this uh, definition of um, a generate daylight, daylight sky for September 21st at 14 o'clock uh, with the latitude and longitude. And, um, and here's the material for the, the sky um, the, the, the sort of, um, the luminance of the sky, uh, as well as the ground. And we'll talk a little bit more about that during class. You can also see here the materials that were used. That's this file right here. And, um, these are the file, the materials that are in the library of materials. We only actually used one of those, which was the context material here. We can also see in here the geometry that it looked that it used. So here is the context material. That's the material that was assigned to this polygon. It was on my. Um, it was called sidewalk, and then it was automatically given this underscore zero. And then here it is describing the vertices, the four vertices of uh, that geometry. So one, two, three, four. And with that, it basically has all the information it needs to know where that material is in space, what that material properties are, and to render it. So coming back here, um, we've got uh, the type, which is the perspective type, and then um, uh, a whole bunch of uh, other files that we'll go into in more detail in class. The um, this one in particular, these two actually, are the output files, the HDR high dynamic range images. The anything that has an underscore zero, underscore one, underscore two has to do with the number of processors you're using and how many parallel processes Radiance is using. So you can ignore those. Um, what Radiance, what Honeybee does is it um, it uh, takes all those different renderings and then compiles them into one rendering. And so if you open this with the program WX false color, um, which is actually, I'll show you where that's located. Open with, it is located under, um, on your C drive, under radiance bin, and then down at the bottom, under WX false color. If it's not there, I'd like you to download it from the class folder and simply copy it to this folder um, for whatever computer you're using. So you open it with WX false color and you're given this very underwhelming white screen. Uh, and that's because as a default, this is um, coming in with a set exposure. 
in order to expose this so that we can see what's going on, we have to go down to display and apply piquant. And now it will expose it to, um, to average out the whole scene according to um, the response of the human eye, basically. And, um, and this is going to allow you to see that one piece of geometry that we modeled. Now, another really interesting or wonderful feature of this particular software, WX False Color, is you can click on um, any part of the scene and it will give you the luminance values if you're doing a luminance um, rendering or simulation. It will give you an illuminance value if you're doing an illuminance simulation. So you really need to know which one you're doing because all it's doing is taking the RGB value for each pixel and translating that into a uh, unit. If you click and drag, you can get the average for that area. Uh, same here. And you'll notice that these are all the same because these are matte surfaces. They're not changing. But, but when you do a rendering with different surfaces, you'll see uh, different values. Okay. So let's go back to Grasshopper, and I want to show you a shortcut for seeing those images. Um, and probably the easiest way to show this to you is to type an image, and we'll get this viewer. And we can uh, see these luminance files in the um, image path. Now, again, we need to adjust the exposure. So to do that, type in exposure here and we can set the exposure by going to there there and we need to set it to true and voila it it's uh, sets an exposure um, automatically we can also uh, manually set an exposure uh, i believe this is zero to one yeah so i can set Uh, my own exposure here. These are these values are way too low. Let's go with five. And you can see you can manually set an exposure uh, for the rendering. I think you can also overexpose this, so I can actually set this to be um, more than one. Yeah, and I can manually overexpose it. So one last note about this HDR image. Uh, an HDR is, again, a high dynamic range image, um, but a lot of um, file image software cannot um, view it. And so, um, Grasshopper or Honeybee has built into it a conversion. So I can go from HDR to GIF um, by taking the file path and then out again. So now I this is now a, just a, a GIF file. And you can see the file path right in there. So that then, if I open up my um folder will automatically make or export a which you can see right here now i can open this in a standard image viewer in the next tutorial we'll go through some more complex scenes and uh, we'll take a deeper dive into materials